Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can use just a little bit of clever code to style a column block in Squarespace to create your own pricing tables. Now, what we're going to be doing today is taking sets of content that are in two columns, three columns, and four columns, and we're going to add some creative borders and box shadows and even some interesting hover effects to really make that content stand out on the page. I'd like to mention I am doing this tutorial in my 7.1 website, but it's the exact same code in older versions of Squarespace as well. So if you're still using Squarespace 7, like a Brine or a Bedford site, this tutorial will still work for you. I'd also like to mention one very, very important thing. There are many different ways to create this look that we're going to do today. And it's very important that you adjust the spacing to match the style of your own site. Your site padding is going to affect how this layout works, and I'll show you exactly what part of the code you need to change to make sure it's sized responsibly for your own website. Okay, let's go ahead and hop into my demo site and get started with this one. So here we are in my demo site, and you'll notice if I scroll down here, I have two sets of content here. I've got three columns down here, and then four options here at the very bottom. I have different types of text as well as a button. And then in this one, I went ahead and put in some images so you can see how those images will respond to this type of code that we're creating. Now you can install this code on a single page, and I'll show you that at the end of the tutorial, but so we can watch all of the changes happen live, we're gonna hop into our custom CSS panel to make this work. So I'm gonna navigate to design, and then I'm gonna scroll down to custom CSS at the bottom. This is where we're gonna be pasting the code today. Starting with this two option layout at the top, when you have two columns of content in Squarespace, those columns get their own code name in custom CSS. So I'm just gonna add a period symbol there and we're gonna say SQS call six. That's the name for a two column layout. Squarespace is a 12 column grid. So if you split that in half, you're stuck with the six. That's where that number comes from in case you're wondering. All right, let's go ahead and give it a border and see what happens here. I'm gonna open up a bracket and I'm gonna say border 5px solid 50 bdb8 and check it out i got that border but holy cow my other column completely moved over to be underneath the first one it did that because our border is wide and this column is set to take up half of the screen so as soon as we add a little extra squarespace goes oh whoa hang on let's rearrange that stuff so we actually need to change the width to those particular columns so i'm going to add a semicolon and i'm going to say width let's go with 40 percent and we'll add exclamation point important to that as well. Now, both columns will fit on the screen, but they're squished next to each other and there's still that extra space on the side of the page. That's because two columns that take up 40% means that content only takes up 80% of the width. Just a little bit of math there for you. So I still have a space that's about 20% of the width of this page that I need to do something with. So this is the part you're gonna need to change specifically for your own site. I've got my site padding over here that's as far left as that content can go. That might be different on your site. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a margin left of, let's just say 7%, and let's just say I spell that correctly. There we go. Now my content is spread out more evenly. Now again, the 7% is what works for my site and the site padding that I have. You might need to change that to 5%, you might need to change it to 12%. I'm not sure what layout you actually are working with there. So definitely adjust that for your own site padding. Seven is what's working for mine right here. Play around with that number. So we've got one more important thing that we need to do here. The last thing that I wanna do is make sure that on mobile, it still looks good. If we leave it set to 40% width and that margin on the left, when we click on this mobile preview, it's not centered and there's no space between the two of them. It definitely looks a little funky on there. So we're gonna add another line of code. I'm gonna say at media only screen and let's go with max width 768 PX. So anything that is smaller than a tablet is basically what I'm saying with that code right there. We're gonna open up a bracket and we're gonna say SQS call six because that's the name of that content section. Then we're gonna open up another bracket and I'll go ahead and say margin left 0% and let's say margin bottom 5%. There we go. Now we got a little bit of space going on there. Pretty awesome, right? So now it's gonna be stretched to be the width of that mobile device, which is something that happens automatically with those columns, but we got rid of that left margin we had put in there and we gave it a little bit of space on the bottom so it looks a little bit better. Pretty awesome, isn't it? All right, let's go back to our full screen view here, and I'd like to show you a couple of other options. 
Now down here, we have our three option layout and you'll notice I've got images there. Now these three options, all we have to do is change that number six to a number four. There we go. And now those have that particular border. However, we ran out of space. We gotta adjust that width and those margins to make that look great. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this to 25%. And actually, let's go ahead and make that 30%, shall we? I think that'll look even better. And then let's change this margin left to, how about just 5%, see what happens. Nope, not quite enough, how about 2.5%. There we go, that's looking a little bit better for me. So again, definitely play around with those percentages. You want it to look great for whatever screen padding you're actually working with. I also recommend using percentage because that's gonna be a responsive size, meaning it will reach that percentage no matter how wide the screen actually is. Now, what we did down here in this very last line was we just updated that number. So our mobile device view is still gonna be exactly the same. You'll see we still have that space there and it stretches the width of the mobile device. So that one's good to go. All we had to do was change that number in the code name from SQS call six to SQS COL four. All right, so we've got one more option down here, four option layout. We're gonna be changing up this number again to the number three. And then let's play around with that padding again. How about we go for 20% and let's make it 25. That could look even better. Nope, too big. <laughs> All right, let's adjust this down to 1% break between them and how about 22%? What does that look like? All right, a little bit better. Still not quite what I'm going for. Let's adjust that number to a two. There we go. Now that looks pretty good to me. So I did mention earlier in the video here, there are some creative things that you can do with box shadows and hover effects. And I'd love to show you some of those right now. If you're already a little overwhelmed and you want to get started with these column layouts and just adding that border, the codes I just walked you through are in the description beneath the video. But if you're ready to keep learning, let's have a little bit more fun, shall we? I'm going to add a little bit of a box shadow here by going back to that first line. I'm going to add a semicolon and say box shadow and we'll give it a 5px five, five horizontal offset, 5px vertical offset, and let's make it a lighter color of, let's say, 0 0.2. There we go, nice and light. You know what, I'm gonna give it a bit of a spread too. Let's give it a little spread so it just kind of fades up a little bit. All right, now we've got those options kind of popping out of the page, looking pretty cool. So let's add a hover effect. Let's make that box shadow an inset shadow so it really stands out when I hover over it. I'm gonna create a new line right here and I'm gonna say SQS call three hover. By adding the word hover, I'm saying, hey, when you're working it with this particular thing, if I'm hovered over it with my cursor, I want you to apply this effect instead. So I'm gonna open up a bracket and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this box shadow right there exactly because we're gonna change it up just a little bit. I'm gonna add the word inset at the very top. And now when I hover over any of those columns, it looks like it's actually pressed into the page. Isn't that cool? You can also, instead of adding the word inset, maybe change the vertical or horizontal offset or even change the opacity of it if you want it to look even more bold when you highlight over it, right? Pretty interesting. Now there's one other cool trick I'd like to show you. We can actually change the color of the button on a hover as well for just the section you're hovering in. So again, I'm gonna enter in a new line and I'm gonna say SQS call three because we're working with the four option layout here. And we're gonna say hover and then I'm adding a space and I've gotta call out that button. I'm gonna say SQS block button element. I can spell that, there we go. <laughs> and then opening up a bracket, I'm gonna say background color, let's make it green. Forgot the L in color, there we go. And then I'll add an exclamation point and the word important because I wanna make sure that the browser prioritizes my code over anything else it's gonna see. Now check it out. When we hover over any of these options, not only is that shadow gonna change, but the color of the button changes as well. Isn't that cool? I think that's a really fun trick. Now, again, all of the codes I just used today are listed in the description beneath the video. Number one thing to remember, you're going to need to adjust the margin and the width to fit the size of the padding on your site, okay? It might be different than mine, so play around with those numbers until you're set. Another thing I'd like to mention is that there are so many options here. Have fun with those borders, those box shadows, interesting hover effects, change around the colors of fonts or anything that you'd like to. I really wanna encourage you to get creative with this one. Um, I also totally forgot to mention when we were in my demo site, 
everything I was doing was in the custom CSS section of my site. If you want to apply this to just one page and not every page on your website, I have a tutorial listed in the description below that will show you how to install code on a single page. Okay, totally possible. Check the links in the description so you know exactly how to do it on one page instead of site wide. Okay. Alrighty, that was a pretty lengthy one, a lot of fun content today, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. With over 30 pages of pro tips and code snippets specific for Squarespace, you can customize your site way beyond your design menu. Download your copy today at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.